Recently, I was hired by a CEO to coach one of his middle managers. The CEO told me that this particular manager was an emerging leader. He was showing signs of being ready for promotion, but he really needed to demonstrate credibility and leadership. Last week, when we were in our third one-on-one coaching session, this young emerging leader admitted to me that he often feels imposter syndrome and he could use a confidence boost. He and I decided to create a list of strategies for him to improve his confidence and his credibility. His list included many mindsets, frameworks, and tactics that we went through one by one. And after our coaching session, I thought to myself, this would be a really great list to share with the Talk About Talk listeners. So what I've done is I've taken seven of the strategies on this list, and I'm going to share them with you now. These are the seven strategies that I personally use and that seem to get the most traction with my clients. This list of strategies includes both mindsets and tactics. My challenge to you is to identify a couple of the things on this list that you can use to boost your confidence and your credibility. Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's talk about talk. Welcome to Talk About Talk podcast, episode number 158, seven strategies to boost your confidence and your credibility. In case we haven't met, my name is Dr. Andrea Wojnicki. Please just call me Andrea. I'm your executive communication coach. I coach business executives like you to improve their communication skills so you can communicate with confidence and clarity. Then you establish credibility and then you create impact ultimately achieving your career goals. Sound good? If you want to learn more, check out talkabouttalk.com. And I've got lots and lots of resources for you there. I've got one-on-one coaching. I've got boot camps. I've got online courses. I've got information about corporate workshops. There's the archive of this bi-weekly podcast. And when you're there, I really hope you'll sign up for my email newsletter. That email newsletter is your chance to get free communication skills coaching from me every two weeks in your inbox. Sound good? Okay, let me start with a quick story about my own confidence, or should I say, lack thereof. Some of you may have heard this story before. Early in my career, when I was working in brand management at Kraft Foods, I was asked to speak at a national sales conference. This was a great honor for me. As you can probably imagine, I prepared myself thoroughly. And when the day finally came, I stepped out on stage and I completely lost it. I could feel my heart pounding, my face turning red, my hands turning clammy. I had sweaty armpits. I was shaking. It was a lovely sight, let me tell you. It was all I could do to walk across the stage, grasp onto the podium and read my presentation, word for word from my written notes. Pathetic disaster. When I was done, I ran off stage and my boss, Sandra asked, Andrea, are you okay? No, I am definitely not okay. I went to a quiet place and I collected my thoughts. First of all, I thought to myself, this can never happen again. So what am I going to do about it? Two things. One, I'm going to volunteer every opportunity that I have to do public speaking. I have got to get over this. And two, I'm going to start collecting strategies, tips, or hacks that work for other people and that might work for me to help me boost my confidence. On that day, I started to create a mental checklist of different mindsets and tactics that might help me with my own confidence. And now as a communication coach, I continue to add to this list and share it with my clients. Now I'm going to share with you seven of the best strategies from the list. These are strategies that I use myself, yes, and also the things that I see working for my clients. Two of these seven tips are mindsets, and the other five are more more tactical in nature. Again, my challenge to you is to identify a couple of the things, maybe two specific strategies from this list that can help you boost your confidence and your credibility. Here we go. The first strategy is to adopt a growth mindset. I know what you're thinking. Andrea, a growth mindset is when I reframe my mistakes and my failures as learning opportunities. 
That's great. But it's not going to cut it when I'm standing in front of a room giving a big, important presentation and I've got bad nerves. Okay, fair enough. Adopting a growth mindset when you feel nervous and maybe your presentation is failing, this growth mindset might help your psychological well being in the long run, but it's not going to help your career in the short run, is it? I get it. I have a different way of thinking about a growth mindset, though, when it comes to conquering your confidence issues. It's about focusing on your genuine curiosity, on your growth, on your learning mindset. Recently, I've been doing a lot of Q&A or question and answer sessions live, some of them in person and some of them virtually. I never know what questions people are going to ask me, and sometimes I get a little nervous. So do you know what I do? I recite my growth mindset mantra. It goes like this. I know what I know, and I'm keen to learn more. There are really two parts of this mantra. First, I know what I know. This is me reminding myself of my expertise. More on that in a minute. The second part is, I'm keen to learn more. Here, I'm reminding myself of my genuine growth mindset, my focus on learning and growing, and my curiosity. When you focus on your curiosity and your desire to learn, it's almost like no one can catch you up on anything. Imagine someone asks you a question that you are in no way qualified to answer. If you have a growth mindset, you could say something like, wow, what a fascinating question. I don't even know where to begin, but let me tell you what I do know. And then you could share with them based on my expertise or based on my experience or even based on my background. Then tell them what you know, and then you say, I'm going to do some research, or I'm going to talk to someone else and get an answer, and then I'm going to get right back to you. Thank you. Wow, you survived a really difficult question, all based on your growth mindset. This is just one example of how you can use a growth mindset when you're feeling nervous. I encourage you, whenever you're feeling a lack of confidence, to focus on your growth mindset. Consciously consider your desire to learn and your curiosity. This can take a lot of pressure off of knowing everything and having the right answer for every single question. So that's the first strategy I'm offering you, adopting a growth mindset. The second strategy is also mindset related. It's focusing on your unique personal brand. What I mean here is specifically focusing on your unique strengths and passions. Often, when we're feeling nervous, it's because we have an implicit belief that others are going to expect us to know everything. Focusing on your personal brand or your unique strengths and expertise can take the pressure off here big time. It's not that you're saying you're good at everything, and it's not that you know everything, but you do know what your strengths are. When I coach ambitious executives on identifying and articulating their personal brand, we usually come up with a list of several themes. They could be personality traits, they could be their leadership style, they could be their industry or their disciplinary expertise. This is where they have legitimate expertise and true genuine passion. After we create this page listing their personal branding themes, I encourage these folks to print it off or maybe create a screenshot And then every time they're going in to lead an important meeting or make an important presentation, or maybe even go into a job interview, make this page the last thing you look at before you go into the room and before you go out on stage. Again, it's not that you're good at everything, but the items on this page are the things that you know are your unique strengths. And this can't help but elevate or boost your confidence. I remember when I was in a board meeting many, many years ago, and the conversation got sidetracked into investments that the firm was making. I remember looking across the boardroom at a bunch of guys talking about the pros and cons of various investment strategies. And I remember thinking, why am I here? Am I an imposter? Do I belong here? I have three degrees in business. And sure, I can talk about a balance sheet or an income statement, but this is out of my league. And then I reminded myself of the reason why I was brought onto this board. It was for my branding and strategy expertise. So when there was a lull in the conversation, I raised my hand and I respectfully said, based on our strategic priorities, my suggestion is that the investment strategy should integrate with these priorities and so on. I remember 
consciously noticing everyone's chair turning towards me and a bunch of heads nodding. With that one sentence, I got the meeting back on track and I also reinforced my professional identity as the branding and strategy expert in the room. So the next time you feel like an imposter, remind yourself of your personal brand. Remind yourself of your superpowers and specifically your unique, unique strengths and your expertise. This can't help but boost your confidence and your credibility. So those are the first two strategies and both of them are mindsets. The first way to increase your confidence and your credibility is to adopt a growth mindset. And the second is to focus on your personal brand. Focus on your strengths. Okay, the third strategy is much more tactical. It's breathing. You've probably heard this a million times. When you feel that shot of adrenaline, just take a slow, deep breath. I have a slightly different take on this one. This is based on what I've been reading lately. It's this, slow your exhale. Very often when we focus on our breathing, we think about our inhale. Instead, think about slowing your exhale. Here's the insight. When you slow your exhale, your brain thinks, wait, she's not gasping for air. Everything must be okay. And then it is okay. Recently, when I've mentioned this to a few of my clients, we also talk about how there's almost like a positive placebo effect here. If you believe it's true by slowing your exhale will reduce your stress, then yes, the research shows that that is what happens. But also because you rationally believe it, this just further amplifies the positive effect. So that's the third strategy. Try it. Slow your breathing, specifically your exhale. Okay, moving on. The fourth strategy is something that I, I know gets a lot of traction with people. Like immediately when I tell them, I can see on their face that this is something that they're going to try. And then they often come back and tell me that it works. And I can also tell you that personally, I do this and it definitely works for me. It's this, frame your nerves, that shot of adrenaline feeling as a positive. Put another way, when you feel that shot of adrenaline, when you feel the butterflies, when you feel your body temperature spiking and your face turning red, consciously say to yourself, yes, that adrenaline is fueling me up to perform. So a while ago, when I was doing some reading on imposter syndrome, research paper after research paper highlighted that almost everybody experiences imposter syndrome. Men, women, young, old, successful, and unsuccessful. It's almost everybody. And almost everybody feels nervous. In fact, the people that do not feel imposter syndrome, the people that never feel nervous, they're the ones that end up showing up flat when they're on stage. You may have seen some of these folks in the past. Maybe you're at a conference and there's a panel with four or five people on stage. They're sitting on bar stools and they're asking questions or they're answering questions. And in inevitably, one of them will come across as far too casual or aloof. This might be the person who's not feeling any adrenaline whatsoever. So the next time you feel that shot of adrenaline when you're quote unquote on stage, remind yourself that now you're fueled up and ready to perform. That adrenaline is positive energy. Okay, on to the fifth strategy. We've covered four strategies so far. The first was adopting a growth mindset. The second is focusing on your personal brand and your unique strengths. The third is breathing. Slow your exhale. And the fourth is reframing that nervous feeling as a positive. This is the fuel that you need to perform. The fifth strategy for boosting your confidence is emulation, as in copying. Here's the exercise. Ask yourself, whose confidence do you admire? It could be a senior leader in your firm, or maybe a celebrity CEO, or perhaps it's a friend or a family member. When you feel those nerves, ask yourself, how would this person respond? How would this person act? And then copy them, act like them. I had an experience many, many years ago, and I've shared this a couple times, and it's very relevant here. I was a relatively new faculty member at the University of Toronto, 
and they asked me to give a lecture to the first year marketing students at Convocation Hall. This is an auditorium that seats thousands. I was honored to do this lecture, and let me tell you once again, of course, I was very well prepared. When the day finally came, I dressed in my favorite pantsuit and my favorite heels, and they asked me to arrive half an hour early so that they could get the AV set up. Like I said, this was a huge auditorium. When I walked in, the lights were all turned off, except there was a spotlight on the stage. The AV guy hooked up my, my headset and my microphone, and he asked me to walk out on stage and test the audio and my slides. I remember feeling the heat of the spotlight on me and thinking, I feel like a rock star. I kind of feel like Madonna. So when the lecture started, I imagined that I was Madonna with all of her charisma and her confidence. I copied, I emulated Madonna's confidence. And when the lecture was over, I remember genuinely feeling like a rock star. The young students got up out of their chairs and not all of them, but many of them rushed the stage to thank me. And they were asking me, when do you have office hours? Are you going to keep teaching this course? What other courses do you teach? I remember thinking, thank you, Madonna. Here's the bonus part of my story. Now, when I look back at the many, many lectures, workshops, and keynotes that I've led, this is one of the public speaking experiences that really stands out for me in terms of my confidence and my connection with the students in the audience. So now, whenever I'm feeling a lack of confidence, sure, I can act like Madonna again, but I can also emulate exactly how I felt when I was on stage at Convocation Hall. So here's the question for you. When did you knock it out of the park when you were on stage? Maybe it was when you were in a job interview, or perhaps it was when you were leading a meeting or giving an important presentation. Ask yourself, what was my mindset for that presentation or what tactics worked? And then in the future, whenever you feel that shot of adrenaline, you can emulate or copy yourself from that experience. So that's the fifth strategy. Emulate or copy someone else's or your own confidence from a successful presentation that you made in the past. Okay, on to the sixth strategy, positive self-talk. The next time you're feeling nervous or feeling a lack of confidence, I encourage you to be very, very conscious of your self-talk. What are you saying to yourself in your head? Instead of ruminating and focusing on your anxiety, give yourself a positive pep talk. How would a supportive friend speak to you if you were experiencing anxiety? A few years ago, I asked a friend of mine, Angie, to provide me with a pep talk before I went out on stage with some improv actors. Yes, I know. When the evening finally came and there I was on stage again with the spotlight on my face and my body temperature rising, I remember thinking of the pep talk of Angie's words and they all came back to my brain. Andrea, you got this. Andrea, there's a reason they asked you and not someone else to do this. You're going to knock this out of the park. Those were her words to me. And then that became my self-talk. This, by the way, is exactly how we should be talking to ourselves. Research conducted by Professor Ethan Cross at the University of Michigan highlights how speaking to ourselves in second person specifically is most effective in terms of halting negative rumination. Here's how that would sound. If I was talking to myself, I would say, Andrea, you got this. Now, try it for yourself. Say your name and use the word you. This is second person. You can imagine the research that they did to come up with this conclusion about using second person. They probably had people writing or speaking out loud to themselves in first person in one condition and in the other condition, people speaking to themselves in second person. So I got this versus you got this. The research shows conclusively that second person is most effective when it comes to self-talk. This is another example, by the way, where there may also be a placebo effect. Ever since I learned about this research insight, I think it's become particularly effective for me because I read the research and I understand how it works. So the next time you're feeling nervous and you could use 
a boost to your confidence, consciously say to yourself, your name, you, and give yourself a pep talk. Andrea, you got this. It works. I promise. So that's the sixth strategy. On to the seventh and last strategy. And it's this. Focus on your main point. What exactly does that mean? Well, if you're in the middle of a speech and you feel your nerves getting out of control, maybe you even forget what you're talking about. That sometimes happens, right? Just go back and focus on your main point. Or if you're in a meeting, like I mentioned, and you're feeling like an imposter, go back to the main objective of the meeting or maybe the main strategy of the organization. There are really two benefits of this strategy. First, in most instances, focusing on the main point or the main objective or the main strategy is almost always a good thing and other people will appreciate it. Secondly, though, perhaps more importantly, reminding yourself of the main point will refocus your thoughts away from negative rumination and towards something relevant for that context. This is something that I share with my clients who are preparing for a big formal speech. If all else fails, return to your main point. It doesn't have to be in a formal speech though. This insight also works in meetings and even in one-on-one conversations. All right, that's it. These are my top seven ways to boost your confidence and your credibility. Do you remember what they were? Don't worry. I'm going to review them for you now. I hate quizzes too. As I'm reviewing these for you, I encourage you to think about which one or two you think will help you get the most traction in terms of boosting your confidence and your credibility. Okay, the first two were mindsets. The first one is adopting a growth mindset. Focus on your genuine curiosity and your desire to learn. It's really hard to fail when you're learning, isn't it? The second is focusing on your personal brand or your unique strengths. It's not that you're great at everything, but when you've taken the time to list your expertise and your strengths, this has got to boost your confidence. The third one is breathing. Slow your exhale. This is an easy one and it works. The fourth one, reframe your nerves as a positive. That shot of adrenaline you're experiencing is the fuel, the positive fuel that you need to perform. The fifth strategy for boosting your confidence and your credibility is copying. Copying someone else's confidence who you admire, or maybe copying the confidence that you experienced in the past when you were successful. The sixth strategy to boost your confidence and credibility is positive self-talk. Provide yourself with a mental pep talk in second person, the way a supportive friend would talk to you. The seventh and the last strategy is to focus on your main point. If you're standing on stage and you lose your place, restate your point. If you're in a meeting and things are going off track, bring people back in to the main point on the agenda. Other people will appreciate it and it will refocus your thoughts away from negative rumination towards what matters. Now again, here's your challenge. I challenge you to identify a couple of these seven strategies that you think will work best for you. Different things work for different people, right? Try a couple of them out for a few weeks and see if you feel a boost in your confidence and your credibility. And let me know how it goes. Okay, that's it. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, I do hope you'll share it with your friends who could also benefit from a boost in their confidence and their credibility. You could also leave me a review on whatever podcast app you're using. It really makes a difference and I appreciate it. Don't forget to sign up for my free communication coaching newsletter on the talkabouttalk.com website. Thanks again for listening and talk soon.